Hello, hello, this is Heather, aka Planner Mumsy. Join me as we kind of do a comparison, pros and cons of each, of both the 2024 Common Planner and the 2024 Journey Planner. Stay tuned. So I literally just finished filming the other video and I knew that this one was going to kind of take a little while for me because I really have to process out a few things to make a final decision. I am doing this video without making a final decision. Um, I really want to make sure that I 100% know I'm making the right one for 2024 there are things about each one of these pros and cons that I like and things that I dislike about both of them. So it's just kind of a matter of me figuring out, can I make one more work better than the other? And I really have to look at my Sterling Ink Planner for 2023 to have an idea of what I felt worked for me and will this one work for me in 2024. Okay, now let's get right into that. I'm actually moving my planner that I use, my Sterling Ink Planner that I used for 2024, three, sorry, 2023 up at the top. Now, there are some things about both of these. Let's just talk about the reality of sizes. These two books are pretty much the exact same width and pretty much the exact same height. One thing that you can see as a difference here is Sterling Ink has the gilded edges, whereas Nisha does not in the Journey Planner. Um, <clears throat> now, she does have the shaded like pages. Uh, for me personally, I've never really used those even with Hobonichi. My eyes are just not that great. So I just, I just don't find like I can't really pull to it and know I'm going to get that that exact page that I need. So the, the shading really is pointless for me personally. Again, uh, you know, this is my opinion and it doesn't have to be yours. It literally is just me processing out what I know works for me and what doesn't. So I guess in, in one sense, Sterling Ink Pro is Gilded Edges. Nisha's um, Journey Planner Con is no Gilded Edges, in my opinion. Now, this is another thing that is a pro and con. Let me get to the pages here. All right. Sterling Ink, only 2024 planner. Nisha's Journey Planner, 2024, 2025, 2026. Pro for the Journey Planner, in my opinion. Con for the Sterling Ink. Okay. Then we have these pages here. Same with this. <laughs> pro, in my opinion, again, mine is a pro actually for Sterling Ink because hers are just blank. Whereas even though they are minimal, small, and would be easy to cover up, Nisha put Dream, Believe, Achieve, and Manifest Your Dreams up here. I don't like that stuff. I way prefer super plain pages for these because I always use them for what I want. And um, again, I understand it's her design. It was her choice. That's, you know, more power to her. Me personally, it's a con versus a pro. I just prefer the minimalistic, I'm gonna do what I want with it, so keep it simple. Okay, then, we have the goal breakdown pages. I will say that I, in this one, it's kind of a toss up because Sterling Inc. used a blank one here and then she did someday, one year, half year, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. And 
Nisha used goals, action steps, first, second, third, and fourth quarter. So it's really, if you're a goals person, which I am not, I've talked about this many times, um, it's just going to depend. I think if I was a goals person, it would probably more be a pro for Sterling Inc. because her boxes are bigger versus Nisha's being in the Journey Planner being pretty small and rectangular. My handwriting is big and fat, so I would need to use more than one box for those. Then these are the quarterly breakdowns between Sterling Inc. and um, I keep saying Sterling Inc. I need to just say the Common Planner and the Journey Planner. Um, you will see here that the Common Planner has these priorities January, February, March, and then January, February, March, whereas it is broken down into just four quarters here on this one with every this box being an entire month. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, all the way to December. Just different. It's just a different layout, in my opinion. It's really not, I'm not going to say it's good or bad one way or the other. It's, it's preference. And because I'm not a big goals person, that I'm just not going to pro or con either one of those because they're just they're just a different layout, but you have options. Now with Sterling Inc., I mean, with the Common Planner, get it together, Heather, she jumps right into the monthly, whereas Nisha in the Journey Planner has a very similar kind of Hovenichi-esque feel where you could use this as a overview or future planner. I used this in my weeks when I did my weeks for like birthdays and that kind of stuff. And it's really nice to be able to just jump back and look at that quick. Then she has full on trackers. The journey planner does. And it goes, each one goes all the way across. So she has two months on two pages and it goes all the way to December. Then she has, da da da, um, <clears throat> She has the weekly, um, and you can see the dates are up here. So it, it starts Monday, goes all the way to Sunday, food trackers. And she has the whole entire year for those, which again, for some people, they would think that that's wasted pages. For me, it actually works out really nicely because I was using a food tracker in a different planner. So these are the total pages. It starts, hang on, I gotta look close. It starts on page 24 and it finishes on page 79. So you can see those are her pages there. Then she gets into the monthly. So for me personally, this is again, personal opinion, but for me, I really do like the food trackers. So this has kind of elevated the planner a little bit for me because it's eliminated something else that I would have had to use anyway. Then getting into the monthlies, just kind of moving this because it's in the way. Getting into the monthlies, um, I am, it's hard. This one's a hard one for me because there's a few things that I like about each one and there's a couple things that I dislike. One thing that I do like is that in the journey planner, the actual day was delineated with gray. I can appreciate that. It just, just kind of brings you to it a little bit easier and helps you kind of pull away and, and see that a little bit. Now, um, I will say that I feel like probably because she did gray it out, it made the boxes to write in too small, personally, because my eyes look at the gray as not being part of the writing. Whereas with another planner, somebody used that as a free page, but they didn't gray it out or a free spot, but they didn't gray it out. They just kind of meshed it all together. See what I'm saying here? 
So her square is the same total size of sterling ink, but my brain thinks you can't write in this. So I feel like it makes this part look more rectangular, okay? So in my opinion, this is a bit of a con. The second thing that I think is a bit of a con is that her font for her numbers are way too small. They need to be much bigger to be able to see that with my old eyes. And you can see with Sterling Ink how she did that. So it's a positive for sure from Sterling Ink. And sorry, I'm trying to get both in frame. And a bit of a negative when it comes to the Journey Planner um, versus the Common Planner because see like it's hard even from here to see it, whereas you can pretty clearly see those numbers there. Okay, so again, I'm just, I'm being really nitpicky now, you guys, <laughs> because her font for her weeklies is better than Sterling Inks because Sterling Ink went big with the numbers and then went small with the weekly. <laughs> so, it's just like, it's like a bounce back and forth. Like I like this better than this, but I like this better than this. So this is why I'm really struggling y'all to actually find which one it works for me best. Okay. Those are the monthlies then, and they both are lumped together. They both have a, they both have the December from the prior year and they both have January for the next year. Okay, so she has the January and then hers goes right into her weeklies there. So she as well in the journey planner goes to January as you can see and then she goes into her monthlies. Now, I mean weeklies, weeklies, sorry. Now, Let's look at the weeklies. This is where I start getting frustrated because last year, Sterling Inc. used in her common planner, Catherine used, I'm just trying to find my blank ish page. I only have one left. She used lines. See the lines to delineate the vertical weekly? Well, 2024, they're gone. So now all you see are the numbers. They kind of look like dots on the camera, but they are the numbers. They are from 6 a.m. till midnight. Yep, yeah. 6 a.m. till midnight. And um, yes, this does make it so it's a little bit easier to customize because you're not trying to work away from the lines. But <clears throat> let's just look at last week or the week before this. You can see how I use the lines to line things up a little bit better. And because they were darker than the grid, it made it easier for me. Now, um, yeah, hang on, <laughs> let me get back. Let me get back to my blank page. Now, when we're looking at the Sterling Ink, just pulling out one of them and kind of pulling them side by side, you can kind of see that it's hard. You can kind of see it here on the screen that this is a like barely, but it is a bit darker than this. This one here is a bit darker than this grid wise, but y'all it is so barely that it's like to the regular eye, it's pretty almost not noticeable. So I feel like because she did say she was darkening this and then because of that, she was getting rid of the lines. I feel like if she was going to do that, she needed to go darker with this grid because now I'm going to really struggle to see this grid line to use that as a guide. And that's really, that's really huge for me that I'm going to now struggle to see this. 
Whereas this grid line might have been lighter, but that line was there and it was just dark enough that I was able to use that line as a guide. Well, with the journey planner, it's there. So I'm just, uh, I don't know. I, again, I said I was going into this without making a decision. And I do still mean it because I just, I need to look at the planners more to make a final decision. But I do like also how the journey planner, how she sort of like boxed in her um, days of the week. I really like that. Whereas it's just kind of their free floating plane on the Sterling Ink planner, as you can see like that. So there is that difference. So in my opinion, the weekly verticals, the lot, there's quite a few cons with the Sterling Ink, but there's a lot of pros with the journey planner. And honestly, this may be the deal breaker for me. I'm not entirely sure yet because we still have one more thing to get to. <laughs> and that is in the back of Sterling Inc.'s Common Planner. Just gotta get through the weeklies. Here we go. Once we get past all of the weeklies, we have a very healthy dose of just plain pages, 369. Just all these plain pages that you could do whatever you want with. You can take notes, you can journal, you can bullet journal, you can do whatever you want here. You can use one day per page, you can use two days per page. You cannot date them at all and just use them as you wish. It doesn't really matter. Now getting to the back of the journey planner. we have dated one day per page and you're gonna have your full year. And then the only difference is on the weekends, she split them into two days per page, but the days of the week, um, Monday through Friday, you have a full page. Now I talked about this in another thing, um, one of my other videos, I used her sticker kits like this and I broke my pages into two per day. Once in a while I allotted myself a full page, but for the most part, two days per page and I just did daily overviews for the most part. Like I want to say the next pages like this page here I literally used for testing fountain pens because I was so busy during this time I didn't have time to write anything so this is me literally just using up pages but I broke it out this way and I've already gone until the end of the year and as you can see I did also put in kind of like some of my own trackers in the back, but I have all these pages left to do whatever I want with, which I'm already at the end of the year. I'm not going to do anything with them hardly now, but that's about the only hiccup for me with the dated day per page is I feel a bit hemmed in that I have to use every day every page every day and that in my opinion is a bit of it's it's like 50% a con 50% a pro why because because I liked the aesthetic of a um, printed out date then now with the sticker you can feel a bump here on both sides and that's a bit annoying because even though my pages look really nice there is a bit of a bump because I literally have these stickers in almost the same place all the way through. I did kind of rotate them a little bit. I started rotating them um, like I would go here and here and here and here you know there and there or something to try and rotate them a little bit so it didn't bump quite as much 
But um, yeah, they're still there because like I can feel them on this side all the way through. So I kind of know where they've been put everywhere. Yeah, so that's a that in using it this way was a con for me. It's not necessarily a con for the common planner because she gives you these pages to do whatever you want. But it's a con for me because it creates that bump. Now, the other thing is the cost of purchasing these stickers. I won't have or incur that cost because this is already dated and it's already here for the entire year. So y'all, can you see my struggle? <laughs> I really am still to this minute not sure which one of these I want to use. Um, but I'm for sure I know that it's down to the common planner and the journey planner out of all of the planners I've used. That's out of that's out of Aura Estelle, that's out of Wonderland 222, that's out of Paper Test, that's out of Planner Monkey Co. Um all of those planners, I'm, I've am i come down to two. So these are the two that between the pros and cons, I know can work the best. And at the end, um, the journey planner has maybe like eight. Oh, this is not the journey planner. Uh, the journey planner has maybe like eight leftover pages right here that are not written on at all and then um obviously like you, you know you know 369 blank pages with the sterling ink okay y'all i need your help i need your opinion going through these with a fine tooth comb with me now knowing a little bit more about how i plan and what works for me what is your opinion which one of these two planners do you think would be better for me and then tell me, for you, what do you think are some pros and cons between both of them? I think I already have an idea um, for both of them, what what some of y'all might say. But what are, what are some of those pros and cons that you have between each of them? And which one would you choose? I would love to hear your thoughts. I will be linking both of these companies down below. I purchased all of this stuff with my own money. And no longer on the PR team for Sterling Inc. She hasn't had one in probably, I mean, going on a year. Not quite a year, but pretty close to it. So I definitely, you know, purchased both of these. Oh, the only other thing that I didn't mention was price. Actually, before I cut out, let's talk about that. The Common Planner Full Year with the Gilded Edges was $48 shipped. Okay, $48 shipped. The Nisha um, Ferdinando Journey Planner was $75.84 shipped. Wow! Yeah, we're talking quite a difference in price there, y'all. That is kind of for some going to be a pretty big deal breaker. I'm just kind of doing the math out here. So it's like almost a $28 difference between this planner and this one. A lot of people would say that's like a whole planner, which you would be right. Now I can say that um, the Journey Planner is new this year. She doesn't have a big sticker shop and is not selling all those other things. So she probably just doesn't have the capability that Sterling Inc. would have that would help Sterling Inc. get her, her pricing down. Oh, definitely, there, there are some pros and cons there that you definitely need to look at, but there is basically like a $38, I mean, a $30 difference between these two planners as well. So that kind of makes a little bit of a difference. The other thing for me is, what are the chances I'm gonna sell this for what I paid for it versus selling this what I paid for it. Mm, that's another factor to consider as well. I appreciate you guys and I appreciate you helping me out. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, like and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!